Hello, welcome to basics of noise and its measurement. Today we will be introducing a couple of new terms uh, which are very widely used in uh, noise reduction industry and academia uh, and some of these terms uh, are like transmission loss, mass attenuation, sound transmission class, uh, noise reduction coefficient and things like that. So I just wanted to introduce these terminologies because once you are done with this course and if you encounter these things in uh, your uh, workplace or in your college, uh, you should have some idea as to what they mean. So the first thing is mass attenuation. So whenever I have some sound which is traveling across in a medium and I want to reduce the level of noise at the other end, then I can do it in two, three different ways. The first way is that I pluck up, uh, uh, put a heavy piece of mass as an obstacle for this sound and and then less amount of sound gets transmitted across this block of mass. So this way of reducing noise level at the other end is known as mass attenuation, okay, where I rely on just mass and it is not rigidly fixed, it is actually free to move. But because it is mass and the sound pressure wave has to move this mass, so that uh, consumes a lot of energy. So the other side experiences less sound level. So we will explain this uh, so, uh, a little bit more. So suppose I have sound which is traveling like this and I have mass here, okay. And this is some mass. This is my incident wave P plus and because of this there is some transmitted wave PT. And what I am interested in is, so this uh, is that P t should be very small compared to P plus, that is what I want. And here I am actually relying on this mass to do that. So without going into the mathematics of it, there is a relationship which connects P t to P plus and that relationship is this. Trans complex amplitude of transmitted uh, sound wave divided by P plus. So this is a complex number is equal to 2 Z naught over 2 Z naught plus J M omega. Okay. What is Z naught? This is characteristic impedance of air, so rho naught C. Then M is mass per unit area. Okay. So if I am putting a panel here and the panel weighs 100 kilograms and if the area of the panel is 5 square meters, then the value of m will be 20 over 100 over 5 which is 20 kilograms per square meter. So that is mass per unit area and then omega is equal to 2 pi f. Okay. Or I can also express this in a different way which is 1 plus j times m omega over 2 z naught. This is another way. So what does this relation tell us? So what it says is 
so we'll look at two three possibilities one is what if omega if m omega over 2 z naught is extremely small compared to 1 okay what does that mean that this term is extremely small compared to 1 then in that case p t is approximately equal to p plus okay so if m omega over uh, 2 z naught is extremely equal to one, uh, small compared to 1 or I can also say m omega is extremely small compared to 1 or m times f times 2 pi is extremely important small compared to 2 z naught or I can bring this thing pi or I can simplify this further then if this condition is true then whatever I will be hearing on the transmitted side will be pretty much same in amplitude as to what I it is being incident on this thing. So what does this mean further which means that this means that if okay so what, what what does that mean that this will be true if either m is very small or f is very small or both of them are very small and when i am talking small in the in this sense z naught over pi okay so what this means is that if i have a low frequency sound then i have to really put a very heavy mass to stop it from getting transmitted to the other side okay because it's the multiple of m and f which matters or if i have a very small mass then most of the frequencies will easily pass through it unless frequencies are extremely high okay so if i have to make this mass attenuation effective i have to keep on and if i want to be so at moderate frequencies and high frequencies even moderate values of m can do the job but for low frequencies i have to be make mass really large and it's not specifically mass it's mass per unit area it's mass per unit area and using this p t plus uh, uh, over p plus relation we can also calculate uh, something known as t l which is called transmission loss and we can calculate it in decibels and how do you do that if you take the magnitude of this thing and square it that will be the ratio of energy which is getting transmitted okay so the whatever is the uh, ratio of energies which is not being transmitted that is your tl that is your tl and then you can calculate it in decibels okay so that is your transmission loss so this is uh, one important way to attenuate sound as it is propagating in the medium so if i am talking and i place a wall at the other end then it's very uh, then it will be uh, for less values of m most of the low frequency sounds will still get transmitted high value uh, high sounds high frequency sounds will get attenuated to a larger extent so this is one way to attenuate sound second way is so in this approach i did not assume that sound is getting actually absorbed by the mass all what is happening is that this pressure wave is causing motion of this mass back and forth when the pressure is high here the mass moves on the other way in a positive x direction when it is low then it gets sucked back so the only thing which is happening is that 
this energy due to pressure is getting transmitted uh, translated into kinetic energy of the system but there is no dissipation happening in this system okay so but we can also have sound attenuation through dissipation so this energy could enter into the material and because of internal friction and viscosity or whatever it can get converted into heat and it can get lost okay so that is another so absorptive way so this is another mechanism through which energy can be absorbed okay and if more of it gets absorbed then less of it is getting transmitted to the other side so these are the two mechanisms through which a lot of attenuation of sound is uh, it happens okay so then there is this term called stc sound transmission class okay and what is it it is used to characterize partitions so what will be a partition a door is a partition a wall is a partition a window is a partition you can even put a plank of wood between i am say the noise source and the other side that is also a partition so they are used to characterize partitions to indicate how good they are at attenuating sound okay and what is it see it is a number single number so i can have a partition a wall and i can say its stc rating is 25 and it means something what it means we'll talk about it later but it means something and there are some international standards used to determine the stc rating of any partition and there are some so there is one standard astm e413 then there is another one e90 so these are there okay roughly if the uh, roughly if the stc number is n then you can say that if the incident sound is 100 decibels then the sound which is being heard on the other side will be 100 minus n roughly it is not an exact mathematical relationship but roughly roughly okay <clears throat> so that is what in a broad sense stc number means and this is basically used by americans and you see this number a lot of times even on some of the indian stuff which we see so they say that oh the stc rating of this door is 80 which means roughly if you have 100 decibels outside then it will be 20 decibels inside roughly so stc another thing to look at it is that stc measures how much sound is blocked okay it does not tell you how much sound is being absorbed the some sound may be getting reflected also okay some sound may be getting reflected some sound may be getting absorbed and only whatever is left is getting transmitted so it tells you how much sound is getting blocked it does not tell you how much sound is getting absorbed so very fundamental thing because there is another thing called nrc so this tells you how much sound is getting absorbed and i will show you some values of stc so what do these stc numbers mean so they mean that okay so if there is some door let's say and you say that its stc is 25 it means that 
if I am talking on one side of the door, the other person on the other side of the door can maybe he will be able to clearly understand what is going on on the other side. Okay, so that is that is what is the meaning of STC 20C 25. If you go to STC 35, then the same door. If there is loud speech on this side, then the person inside the room will be able to hear something, he will say okay there is something discussion is happening, but may not be able to necessarily figure out what is being discussed. Okay. If STC becomes 40 then you say okay not much is being heard, so whatever conversation is happening in this room it is it remains private. Okay. So, it says sound transmission class I would have thought that the more this number more sound gets transmitted, but it is actually the other way around. The more the number the less sound is getting transmitted. Okay. STC of 60 plus superior sound proofing most sounds are inaudible, inaudible okay. so and so on and so forth. So, you can look at this and you can get a general flavor of qualitative flavor of what is the meaning of different STC numbers. And you can buy suppose you want to purchase a ready made window for your room and you can specify the manufacturer especially if you are designing it from an acoustical standpoint that I want that this window should have a STC rating of 40 or 60 or 70 or whatever. So, that is how you specify a lot of times people sell uh, partitions you know there are in big offices there are cubicles and there is a partition they also have a STC rating and they tell you how much sound is getting blocked, how much sound is getting blocked. They do not tell you how much sound is getting absorbed. So, so this is from Wikipedia and this is another list from Wikipedia and you have a range of different types of materials, not materials but partitions. So, I am not talking about material. So, this is partition and different STC ratings and in general if you have a single pane glass window like the window there, then it has a very low STC rating 27. Okay. And then if you have a double wall then STC rating goes up significantly. In aircrafts the windows are double walled because you do not want a lot of sound from outside to go in and inside to go out and also you want to remain immune because the engines are running outside they are very noisy. So, they are they have very high STC ratings they designed in such a way that their STC ratings are extremely high. So, this is what STC rating is all about and the next term which I am going to mention is NRC. Okay. So, this is noise reduction coefficient. So, STC rating it could be for a structure, it could be a for a panel, it could be for a window, it could be for a door, it is not for a material, you understand material is different. A door could be made of 20 different materials, the outer lining could be steel, inner could be some wood, then inside could be glass wool, but a window could have glass, outside on it may be having you may have some gaskets and things like that. So, STC is for the whole system. This is NRC is for specific materials and this is basically amount of noise absorbed by the material when sound strikes it. So, when NRC is equal to 0 it is perfect reflection. When NRC is equal to 1, it is perfect absorption. Okay. And this NRC, it has is in this format, NRC is in this format. So, the first number is 0. 
then you have a decimal place then this x could be anywhere from 1 to 9 or actually 0 to 9 and then the y is either 0 or 5 okay. So you can have an RC of point of 0 0.00, an RC of 0 0.05, an RC of 0.1, an RC of 1.5, no 0.15 and so on and so forth but you would not have an RC of 0 0.27 okay. And how do you calculate an RC? So you take the material and find its absorption coefficient at different frequencies. So you measure it at 250, 500, 1000 and 2000 hertz okay these are the standard frequencies and then you find it alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4 for the same material you may have 4 different values and you somehow average them up and you come up with the final NRC rating okay you come up with the final nrc rating for that oh i'm sorry so you start with 125 hertz so this is how you compute nrc so this is noise reduction coefficient so what is noise reduction coefficient it measures amount of absorption this is different this is different than STC which is amount of sound which is getting blocked this is only about absorption okay so that is there and then there is another term called SAE it is sound absorption average and it is pretty much similar to NRC but the only difference is that here the frequencies which we use to calculate NRC or SAA is from 200 to 5000 hertz this is being becoming more prevalent because a lot of sounds which we hear in practical applications they do not limit themselves to 1000 hertz they go up to 5000 hertz easily. So this is becoming more prevalent. This is the limitation that it stops at 1000 hertz okay it stops at 1000 hertz it may be okay for some general music or things like that but not for regular sounds this is more practical okay. So these are some of these important parameters about uh, sound absorption and sound attenuation and we will cl uh, close this discussion uh, today and tomorrow we will discuss two topics how do you measure absorption coefficient of a material and then uh, in that context we will introduce another tool for acousticians and that is called a reverb chamber. So that is all I wanted to discuss today uh, thank you very much and we will meet tomorrow again bye.